The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Uh, at the break, in the half-hour break, we're going to have Mark Douglas. Uh, he's going, the fellow who wrote uh, The Disciplined Trader and uh, Trading in the Zone is going to be my guest. Uh, we'll talk about market psychology a bit. Uh, and also, um, you know, he's coming out with a new book that maybe he'll even mention. Uh, if you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. Now, uh, what I posted into the Tiger TV uh, to start out with today was a trade we looked at about uh, seven or eight days ago, which was short the Japanese yen, you know, based on the patterns that we were looking at. That was a Gartley sell pattern that occurred up at that par 50 level, and the market broke several thousand dollars uh, into, that, uh, into that low that we had there. So it's going to be interesting uh, to see what happens because we've got another same situation coming uh, up in the British pound. And I'm going to cover that in just a second. But the first thing I wanted to do was to talk to you about the um, major thing that's happening astrological. We have a, you know, the big full moon tomorrow, and it's a, it's a very important one. Uh, in China, it's known as the Autumn Festival. Um, it's uh, they have a thing over there that they they sell little moon cakes. They're like little angel food cakes things, and they're they're really fun. Uh, they have them all over China and Hong Kong, and it's a big day. It's a day off. Uh, it's a holiday uh, in China and Hong Kong, so it's a, it's a really big thing. It's also we got the equinox coming in two days. That's the 21st. So it's a time of major major cycle stuff that usually is occurring. You know, we've been up for uh, quite a few days now in the market, and we're coming into this this full moon. And, uh, you know, whether it's going to be a top or not, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Of course, the Federal, uh, Federal Open Market Committee is working today, so it's most probably going to be a very, very volatile day, you know, to uh, under anybody's uh, uh, imagination. It will, certainly, it will certainly be that. So we'll, uh, we'll be watching those markets uh, unfold as we go through. Now, the next market that I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to change the strategy here a little bit because I wanted to walk through you know, some of the things that I look at while I'm, you know, doing the analysis of um, the technical part of this business. And um, it's really um, not very hard. You just have to be able to count and, uh, you know, uh, be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. What we're looking at here is the British pound versus the U.S. dollar. It's a daily chart going back to June. And what I've done, I've, I broke it down into three segments. You, you can see these little triangles that are on the chart that are related to the time. In other words, from the low to the high took X number of days uh, during the time from July to August. From August uh, to uh, late July to early till, till mid-August, we had another one of those. And then from late August to where we are now, we have another one. Now, each of these moves, uh, when you see the time going up, uh, each of these moves uh, were, were, were 13 or 14 days, and then the retracement came down either six or seven days. This is how the market keeps repeating itself over and over again. But what, what we're happening now is that the market is extending itself uh, up into this uh, very large uh, Gartley pattern on the uh, long-term daily chart, and I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to bring that up to let you folks see it so that you'll be able to get a pretty good idea that it is a, a very, very large pattern and that it's something that we have to consider because of the fact that it's got everything that you could possibly ask for uh, in, uh, in the market that, uh, that we're looking at. I'm trying to stretch it out so we'll be able to see this big Gartley pattern that comes in at this 160 level uh, in the British pound. And we have not made the top in the British pound. We're, we've had a high of one, uh, 159.80, uh, and I still think we're going to hit 160 or so right after the uh, the Federal Reserve comes in. But it's going to be a really interesting picture because it has completed this big triangle that is here, uh, and it's quite a big thing. We've got a caller from uh, Atlanta. Danny, are you there? I'm here. Hi, Larry. How are you, my friend? What can I do for you? I wanted to look at the gold contract. We traded about $15 below the 786 and. um I was wondering what you think. You think maybe we'll get down to the 618 of the 
Well, it's it's not it's not acting it's not acting well, uh, Danny. I will put the uh, chart into the room so that you can, you know, take a look at it. But we broke below that uh, 786 level that was really important at 1305, and uh, you know, silver is actually held up above the number. You know, silver is held above the the 1220 uh, per ounce level. You know, we're only about uh, 10 cents away from that, or 2120 uh, in silver. So, but it, it looks lower to me. Uh, of course, it's going to be a you know, with the Fed day, they'll probably, you know, either move it down $30 in gold or up $30 in gold. So it's a rather difficult call to be long here because, uh, you know, you, you don't have much of a cushion and you're below the numbers. So I think that, uh, you know, we're probably looking at the 1266 level, you know, which is the longer term 61% uh, retracement. I've got... Um, um, I've got uh, 1278 is uh, the 618 on my chart. Yeah, 12. I, I, what I do is I, ha I was figuring what the risk factor would be because 1278 is the exact FIP number and 1268 would be the exact amount of the risk. That would be a $10 risk. So uh, if, in fact, it gets there, I'll be looking uh, at the long side of gold and uh, risking, you know, $10 an ounce. But it's going to be probably after the, you know, the Fed Act, so it's going to be something probably – you know, pretty crazy. That would be my guess. Okay, great. I'm looking forward to hearing Mark Douglas. Uh, yeah, I, I think he, well, he's, he's a fun guy. I've known him for a long time, so it's, uh, he's got great information because he knows so many of these people, you know, through the years. He's been involved with uh, so many big traders uh, from his years in Chicago, and it, uh, it it's really uh, exciting to be, uh, you know, listening to him and everything. So, listen, thanks for calling in, Danny. I always appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're going to go back to the British pound here for a second because I think this is really uh, an incredible p potential here for the uh, for the market. Uh, we, we have everything that you could possibly ask for in this British pound. Uh, the time up is equal. Uh, you have the 786 retracement. And if you look at the long-term trend in the British pound, and I would like to do that because uh, it will give you an idea that, uh, you know, what we're looking at here is a very, very bearish market long-term long -term trend. And what we're doing here is basically trying to, uh, you know, to sell one of these uh, little these uh, uh, rallies that we get occasionally. And we have this big ABCD pattern that's forming. I'm trying to, as, we're, as I'm speaking, I'm trying to do two things at once, which uh, we must be able to uh, challenge that. And uh, so we're, we're very, very close. And we will be uh, we will be putting this up here right now, and uh, taking a look at the British pound on the long term weekly basis. We've had lower highs uh, for quite a few years, at least for the last three or four years, and now we're having a very substantial rally. What's interesting about this is these rallies are are equal. The rally that we have between May and November of last year is equal to the one that we're having right now. So there's a lot of things coming into the British pound at this level. So it's going to be a uh, real interesting time, you know, to see if we're able to uh, hold this level or we're, in fact, we're going to be able to pop out to the upside. The dollar index is the key here because the euro is uh, has a great deal of resistance, at least in my opinion, around the 134 level. And uh, <clears throat> uh, that would be equivalent to 81 in the dollar index, and we'll be able to see. But there is a possibility, you know, the Fed could come out with, you know, some crazy uh, announcement of some kind. They're going to do something different than what people are expecting, and that's the problem with this uh, particular meeting that they're having is everybody's speculating about it. And uh, believe me, the Fed has uh, several hundred traders that trade the market, and if you want to talk about inside information, that's the ultimate of inside information is when you're working for the Federal Reserve Board and you have pre-existing um, uh, information. You you just you know this is something that you just don't get very often. Well, I never get it, but some people get it. And fortunately, uh, you know, I I actually I'm not a uh, person that deals very much in uh, fundamentals, which is the understatement uh, uh, of the uh, of the year. But the question that someone asked me is, what do I do? You know, on Fed Day like this. Well, I'm, I'm I have some areas. You know what I'm looking at for uh, you know potential buys. I'm looking. Uh, you know, to try to buy the Treasury bonds down to one uh, around the 129 level, and I'm looking at uh, the potential of uh, the stock market making a pretty good top in here because we have uh, we've gone up for uh, I don't know how many 
days and weeks in a row, and we're coming into the full moon uh, tomorrow. So we're in the zone of the full moon right now, and so we will we will see what uh, you know what will what will transpire in here. Uh, and then I'm also you know we, we watch the Japanese yen has been coming down, and uh, that looks like it could uh, could go lower. And so these are the things that you know I'm sort of keeping in in mind as I'm uh, as I'm looking at these uh, charts as we go through. Um, the, you know it's really tough on Fed Day because uh, the emotionalism that the people in the the financial press you know build into the market and and frankly if they if they weren't around which you know they have to be around because they have all the uh, you know that's that's how they make their money is by the uh, you know using their uh, uh, information network to get people to listen to it. And frankly, I don't like to listen to it, but who knows? Anyway, on the positive side, you know, we, we uh, last week we bottomed in the VIX index. We did not go uh, very much uh, below the 61% retracement, not more than a, a few cents. We've only rallied a half a dollar in the VIX index, but at least it's held that level so far. But all bets are off on Fed Day because it's going to be, you know, just incredibly, uh, incredibly wild and active. Uh, there's a lot of speculation from what I've heard from you know, people that drop me emails and asking me what I think, and, and, and Frank, I can't answer because I, I don't understand the fundamentals about what they're going to do, and I don't even understand the tapering process that they're talking about. I don't even understand how they even, you know, uh, you know, do the bonds. They create money out of thin air, and that doesn't seem like the right thing to do. But uh, fortunately, that's the uh, that's the way things, uh, the way things actually go. Whether I, I don't know what will happen, you know, longer term, but we'll we'll be able to see uh, short term today. It's going to be very volatile, like it always is, because the Fed does a lot of uh, you know manipulations in the market, and uh, believe me, they do it for their own account. They don't have to report to anybody. It's a private bank. It's not a federal bank. It's not operated by the government. So just keep that in mind that they do have uh, you know pretty good inside information uh, as we're going. Uh, the uh, the price of gold uh, has gone. We were talking about Danny just a second ago from Atlanta, and the price of gold has gone below that 1305 level that I thought was very important because it was a you know strong 786 retracement. And so what you have to do in that situation is to wait and see that you come up with uh, uh, a strategy where you don't have to uh, uh, risk very much. And now to me the trend is still down. So what I would have to do is to say I must wait to see if this is going to be a, a situation where, uh, you know, gold is going to break all the way down to that 1278 uh, level, which is only, you know, $22 away from where it's trading right now. And $22 a day is nothing. Last night we dropped uh, we dropped $22 in a matter of 20 minutes. Uh, 877-927-6648. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning and right now you can get a month long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. Larry, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, folks, I'm back, and I've uh, posted the chart of the 30-year Treasury bond, and it shows that uh, we are forming a Gartley pattern if we can get the bonds down to about the 129.09 uh, level, uh, 129, somewhere in that ballpark. We've had a little bit of a rally after the early morning break. We've got bonds back almost unchanged on the day. Uh, the stock market's reacting uh, just a little bit, but frankly, you know, most people are sitting on pins and needles, you know, waiting for the the great oracle to speak and to see what, uh, you know, to see what happens. We should have incredible volatility today because this, uh, within within one day of the full moon, which is tomorrow, and uh, it can easily, you know, come in one day early because it can be a day early or a day after. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a pretty big one. And remember, we have the equinox. That is coming uh, on the 21st. That's the autumn equinox. If you ever get a chance to go to Mexico to the Chichen Itza pyramids down in um, the, uh, 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 the uh, peninsula, oh, I can't, the Yucatan Peninsula, it's just south of Cancun. And if you're ever there to go to Chichen Itza, uh, it's a big holiday on that day on the 21st of September because that's the day that the sun goes directly on top of the, uh, the pyramid. And as the sun moves from uh, east to west, uh, it forms a uh, series of triangles, perfect uh, right triangles. And as they move down the base of the pyramid, like they were walking down 
it looks like a snake, a serpent that goes down. It goes right down into the jungle. It's really an incredible, uh, incredible thing if you ever get a chance to see it. But it's going to be very busy there, folks. They have a, a place where you've got uh, the uh, about a quarter of a million people there. And it's not as safe as it used to be. So if you're going to go there, make sure you go with a with a reputable travel agent and you go in a big bus so that you have protection and things like that. You don't want to be driving your cars down in that area uh, anymore because it's a uh, very poor country. And when you have people that have very little, they have very little to lose. And so they have a tendency to want to take things from people that have more than they do. So you've got to be, you know, very, very careful. Uh, you know, in that place. When I was going through there, uh, once I, I was giving money uh, out of the car, and I ran out of I ran out of coins, and this little kid bit me on the arm because I didn't have any more pesos to give him, and so I, I had to go to the emergency room and get it taken care of. Fortunately, I didn't have to take a tetanus shot or anything, but uh, it was really an amazing situation. And that was 20 years ago, so you can imagine what it's like now. So you've got to be careful if you're down in an area. But the spectacle of the equinox is what's important. That's one of the uh, really, uh, really true things, that, I mean, amazing things that you can think of that they built this thing 1,500 to 2,000 years ago and to know exactly where the sun was going to be on that particular day because it only happens on September 21st. And if it's a cloudy day, you don't get to see it at all. Uh, so I was there on a very sunny day, so it was very easy to see, but it was really quite spectacular and, uh, you know, something that you just, uh, you'll never forget. Anyway, uh, we're going to, uh, we're coming up to the big break here. When we get back from the break, we're going to have Mark Douglas on. Uh, if you have any questions, you can call in at 877-927-6648, and Mark will be, uh, Mike, Mark will be looking at that. Now, the Fed, um, the, the minutes come out at uh, 2 o'clock. Uh, Eastern time, and then I guess Bernanke is going to be talking after that. So there's going to be about a 45-minute window there where anything could happen. Where when he opens his mouth, you know they're going to be able to, uh, you know, open up and find out, uh, you know, that he's saying something or he's not saying something, or they don't understand what he's saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, that happened with uh, Bernanke all the time. We got a call from John in Philadelphia. Are you there, John? Larry, thanks for taking the call, sir. How are you today? Fine. What do you have for us today, my friend? There are a real specific question for you. I, um, I thank you for reminding us uh, this week is both the full moon on Thursday and Saturday of the equinox. Larry, um, the uh, S&P 500 has made a high this morning at 17.06, still shy, you know, just three points, but shy nonetheless of the uh, the high August 2nd up at 1709. What I did find interesting, however, in looking at the S&P 500, I also looked at the Russell 3000 and the, Wol- the excuse me, the Wilshire 5000, the other two really broad U.S. stock indices, and I made note and posted in the Tiger's Den for your uh, listeners that the Russell 3000 today made a new high, took out the August 2nd high by a fraction. Now, my question is for you th- is this. Um, on the S&P, 1706 high. Oh, John, we got to use we're, we're coming up to the break, John. Stay with us till after the break, and then we'll have Mark Douglas. We'll finish with you, and then we'll talk to Mark, okay? Hang on, hang on with us. Thank you. Uh-huh. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. 
In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back with uh, John from Philadelphia. John, we have Mark on the line, but let's finish up with that, Russell. I see that it's made new highs. I know we've missed it in the S&P. What, what is your feeling? or Do you have a question in there or something that I could help you with? Yeah, real specific question, Larry. S and P. Um, since we're almost at the highs, but not quite, if we short it right in here, or if we short it a couple points higher, is there a uh, stop out point that you have confidence in setting using any of your fib expans uh, expansion or contraction studies um, uh, that that uh, come from that? Uh, I'm just I'm loath to yeah. short without a. Uh, yeah. a good idea on where to cover in case I'm wrong. Well, the problem is it's Fed Day, and you know what happens there. Liquidity, illiquidity hits the market, so I would say not risk more than 8 or 10 points in the S&P. You know, that's $500 as a maximum. So, so that would be my stop. Yeah, I'd use a money stop. I don't know. Uh, I don't have a price stop because, you know, we went up to the 786. Uh, you know, whether the old, I don't think the old high means very much or not, but, you know, we've got all these astro things happening in the Fed, so it's going to be really wild. You know, it's probably best to stand aside for a couple hours after the Fed is done and then trade, but, you know, sometimes you miss a great opportunity. So I would say just put a stop in and hope for the best. 
Pleasure. Thanks so much, and uh, you thanks bet. in advance for uh, interviewing Mark Douglas. You bet. Thank you for calling in, John. Okay, we've got uh, Mark Douglas on the line. Mark, are you there? Uh-oh. He must be in, he must be in his airplane. Those G5s have these doggone sophisticated microsystems. Mark, are you there? Hmm, I don't have Mark on the line, so we'll see. We'll just wait and see if he comes back on. Uh, um, it, I can hear you, Larry. Oh, well, good. I, I, I'm hearing a tremendous whistling. Tell the pilot in that G5 to turn down the microwave. <laughs> Mark, how are you today? Oh, dear. It's not been a very good reception so far. That's very unusual because usually we have good reception. I'm not hearing you at all, Mark, so I hope uh, that you... Uh, we'll come in a little clear. I don't. Uh, now you've got the Italian boy stuck because when I don't have any alternative to do, that means I must keep on talking, and that not, not that not necessarily is a good idea. So I don't know what's happened. Uh, they're going to try to connect with Mark again, and we'll we'll go from there, and we'll we'll see what uh, see what happens. I'll tell you, folks. I my greatest challenges in life comes from this. Uh, these uh, these computers they drive me nuts. Mark, are you there? Well, I'm not hearing Mark for some reason. He's not coming through on my end. I don't know, uh, you know, what the problem is. Uh, sort of embarrassing for me to say he was on, but we did hear his voice for a second. I just don't know where he is right now. I'll just keep keep working through this until we find out if he does come back on or not. But. Uh, you know we are we're going to have some incredible volatility today because you can hear it on CNBC uh, and Bloomberg in the morning. Each morning when I get up, I put those shows on just to see that we're able to um, you know find out uh, you know where uh, the markets are expected to go. You know what are the numbers about the tapering, whatever that means. But what I did do was I posted into Tiger TV the chart of the uh, 30-year Treasury bond because that's a huge market. It trades about six times more than the stock market. And as you can see, there's a huge Gartley pattern forming down about a point from where we are now so that if the market would back off about a point uh, into the uh, the Fed meeting or after the Fed meetings, that would most probably be looking to be a buy. And if it should get up to the, you know, the 132 level, about two points higher from where it is right now, it would almost uh, be a very good sell level. So you've got two very wide expansion bands. We had... Um, We'll try back. Mark, are you there? No, nope. evidently we, we we something's happened that uh, it just didn't uh, just didn't work today. I don't know uh, what the problem is. I know he has a telephone because I spoke to him last night and again this morning. Uh, let's just go back to these uh, these markets a little bit. Um, the, the main thing that I'm watching during these markets are two things. First is that that uh, British pound trade. Because uh, I believe at that 160 level in the British pound, if you believe in pattern recognition and you believe in Fibonacci numbers, this is everything that you could possibly ask for uh, in a trade, is this pound up at this 160 level. It might get to 161, so you've got to risk about $600, uh, you know, to get into that. But uh, it's going to be quite interesting to see what happens, you know, during the Fed time because it's going to be, you know, very, very crazy without any stretch of the imagination. But uh, that would be my number one thing to look at is the British pound. That pattern is completing. You have four ratios coming together at the same time. You have time and price of all the upswings. In other words, all three of those waves going up to the top are equal. And uh, you just it's just got so much beautiful harmony that you uh, it's it's what you live and breathe if you're a uh, you know pattern recognition swing trader. So. We'll see what happens. We don't have to wait more than about another uh, hour or so, and we'll have a pretty good idea, you know, how this stuff is all going to uh, unfold. Uh, the stock market, as uh, John that was on before told us, you know, the Russell has made new highs. We haven't made new highs in the Dow Jones. We haven't made new highs in the S&P. We did make new highs in the New York Stock Exchange Index. So, you know, the market is still bullish, but we're right over this lunar aspect. And the problem is it's not the exact day. Tomorrow is the exact day. And so that's the time where we would be watching to see if the market is going to, uh, you know, turn at that point. So those are the, the main factors of, you know, what I'm watching, you know, for Fed Day. And we will see, uh, you know, in a couple hours what's going to happen. It's always crazy. and But the thing is, it follows the FIB sequence of numbers 
you know, incredibly well. Uh, oh, by the way, if there's one other announcement. Uh, I'm going to be speaking at the Market Technicians Association uh, meeting in Seattle tomorrow night, and so uh, I'll be traveling all tomorrow, and I won't be able to uh, be on the show. Let's try one more time. Mark, are you there? Uh, I think I am. Hey, see when you pay your bill, see how quickly you get turned on? <laughs> how are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm calling from a hotel room, Larry. I yeah, oh, okay. Well, then you don't have to worry about the charges. <laughs> Mark, for some the reason, question, when you guys called me, it didn't work. I don't know. Well, anyway, let's, the, the number one question that I had that came through three times from people this morning is that why is the psychology uh, so important in trading? <laughs> You want me to try another question? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Larry. <laughs> that's, a, that's an inside joke, folks. <laughs> Why is the psychology so important? Well, let's put it this way. If, if, if any of your readers have um, had any problems at all executing their trading system, in other words, if they've got rules, or they've got a methodology, they've got a plan, and they can't follow their plan. There's, there's got to be a reason why, and that reason is going to be, that reason is going to be mental forces that, you know, or mental obstacles or forces that are keeping them from doing exactly what they need to do when they need to do it. That's psychology. In other words, you can, you can have, for, for an example, we both know, Larry, that, that, that you can analyze the market to death, and you can even have a, a methodology that could give you. Uh, ten winning trades in a row. In other words, if I if I have a system or a method that actually um, produced ten winning trades in a row, but on the eleventh trade I made what I refer to as a you know like in my books as a trading error. In other words, a trading error could be a money management error. For an example, if I if I won ten times in a row and and I in this next and, and I get my next signal and and I'm just absolutely positive this signal is going to work and I end up putting on a much larger position than than I ordinarily ordinarily uh, than I ordinarily would or or something that uh, that is outside the the, the boundaries of, of normal money management. Uh, and, and if the market goes against me, in those cases, if the market just happens to go against you just a little bit, you might end up getting panicked, get out of the position, or, or, or find that you can't get out of the position at all because you end up in a, in a mind free situation like a deer caught in the headlights because, because the market went against you in a way that you just completely didn't expect or anticipate and it was a, you know, a rather violent move. Uh, what you have is a situation where you've got 10 winning trades, you know, you got out of 11 trades, 10 are winners, one's a loser, and, and you might end up with having more losses than you, than, than you do profits. That's psychology. That has nothing to do with analysis. Yeah, that, that I understand, because when you're dealing with money, people react differently than you think that they might, that's for sure. Mark, what would be the, the single best thing a person can do, you know, that's trading, that having some of these problems, what is the best approach that they can have to, you know, if they have a system that's working all the time, yet they're not able to execute it, what, what, would, what would you tell them? I tell them to read trading in the zone. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that, <laughs> certainly, I, I read it every nothing, day. Certainly, I read it every day. <laughs> there could be any number of reasons why they're not executing it properly. I mean, you know, the, 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 first, the first big reason is because they probably haven't learned to think in probabilities. In other words, they haven't learned to change their perspective on what analysis can do and what it can't do and what their expectations of analysis. In other words, what they have to do is learn to take trading out of a right or wrong context, out of a win or lose context, in the sense that they can they can step into what they need to do without being afraid of being wrong, without being afraid of losing. And 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 the only way you're gonna the only way they're gonna get to that point is to completely change their perspective on what analysis can do. In other words, analysis gives us gives us it tells us what to do and when to do it. But it's not necessarily telling us what's going to happen next. In other words, what we have to do is change our perspective from from a trade by trade. In other words, winning. In other words, do I have to win on this next trade, or what are my results over a series of trades? And and when you, when we can change our perspective to understand, or change our perspective to the point where we put analysis within the context of it's giving me odds of success not necessarily that this next trade is going to be successful, then we can take trading out of, a, out of a right or wrong context and not be afraid of doing what we need to do when we need to do it. And then that's one, that's, that's one particular big area that people have to overcome. The next big area is um, uh, self-sabotage. In other words, you know, people, all of us, and I think more people are, are aware of the whole concept of self-sabotage more now than certainly what they were 
when I started, you know, coaching, what, about 30 years ago. And, uh, you know, there's not everything that, that we've learned throughout our lives or all the beliefs that we've acquired about ourselves would argue for having uh, prosperity or increased levels of prosperity. In other words, you know, we can get to a certain point and, and then, you know, these kind of beliefs, you know, whether we're aware of them or not, start arguing against having more money. And and what we end up doing is end up what we end up doing is 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 um, committing trading errors. In many yeah. cases, even on, we're not even aware that that we're making trading errors, and which brings our equity down to a level that we're more comfortable with. And so the whole area of self sabotage is is one that you know what what I teach people or you know is that they don't necessarily have to know exactly what it is that they've learned that's arguing against why they shouldn't have more money or why they shouldn't be more successful or more prosperous. But what they do need to do, what they do have to do, what they do have to do is recognize that the, the kind of these kind of dynamics exist. And, and set up a regimen, set up within their trading plan, uh, a regimen that recognizes when these forces are starting to, uh, let's say, when these forces are starting to come to the forefront of their consciousness and, and have, where they have the potential to make a trading error, and then either scale back in their trading or don't trade at all. In other words, people have heard from years that, that good traders have said, hey, you know what, after you've made a lot of money, your, your equity is up, and, and you've had a sustained run of, of success, take a vacation and have a good and, and have something really tangible that you that you want to spend your money on well well that that advice is is really just another way of saying hey you know what when when those internal forces take a vacation because if you're not exposed to the market you can't lose your money and what you need to do is you need to get acclimated to having that kind of success and when you become acclimated to the to, to this new level of success, the chances of you making an unconscious trading error are diminish, and and you can go on after you've taken your vacation and go on and and, and you know start trading again and build your account up even more. And then the, then the third area is is from uh, euphoria. In other words, you know people get uh, you know we all of us you know all of us. Uh, uh, you know, we, we have a sustained run, or have a have a big, you know, a, a really good winning trade, and you know, everyone has a different a different threshold. But but we have a tendency to flip into a state of euphoria, and a state of euphoria. I'm just simply defining as the difference between normal confidence. In other words, we have confidence to step into a situation and do exactly what we need to do without being afraid, and euphoria being a state of mind where we actually believe we're omnipotent and nothing can go wrong. And and you don't want to be in that kind of state of mind when you're trading because you're going to make an error that that can usually have disastrous consequences on your equity. That's for sure. Now, I wanted to ask you one other question. Mark, do you have a website that the folks can go to to uh, you know get some of your information and things? Oh yeah, markdouglas.com. Just well, that's a tough. That's a tough one. Yeah, Did you think of that all by yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I did. As a matter of fact. Now I have one other question for you. I know you're coming out with a new book. How's that coming along? Well, Larry, it's coming along. It's just only taking me. I just get you know, for being a third book, I thought it was going to be pretty much of a breeze, and it and it hasn't been at all. Uh, it's been very. It's been it's been actually far more challenging to write than my first two books, and uh, basically. You know, if if you were to ask me why I'm even writing it in the first place, it probably it would probably be a much easier question to answer. And um, uh, because the first two books, the Discipline Trader came out in 1990, and Trading in the Zone uh, came out in the year 2000. Mark, and, hold hold on, Mark. Okay. We got to take a, a short break here, and then we're going to finish up. So okay. stay with us here, okay? Yeah, no problem. On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.6% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. And all six of those winning trades had been initiated no earlier than just the previous month. With the 600th weekly Gold Report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. 
That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now you can get a 30-day free trial to The Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market provides trading opportunities after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're speaking with Mark Douglas from Discipline Trader and Trading in the Zone. His website is Mark Douglas, that's D O U G L A S 1 S dot com. And, Mark, uh, the new book, do you have a title for it yet? Well, uh, yeah, people always ask me for titles, and actually, it's one of the last things that <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Uh, as, as I write, I've, I've been working on this book for six years now, and as I write, if titles come to mind, I just you know, throw them in a file, and then at the very, when I'm actually done with the book, is I'll decide what title to use, what that's title good. best reflects the material that, that's in the book itself. Would uh, would be best for people to just drop you a go to the website? Will you have a spot there when the book is out? Or yeah, would be the yeah. Best as, as a matter of fact, they do. There's there's a yeah. They can they can uh, you know there's there's a sign up sheet that if they want to be notified when the book is done that uh, uh, you know we'll let them know. Well, that's good. So they just go to www.markdouglas1s.com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That sounds good. Sure. Yeah. Okay, listen, thank you very much for being on the show, and I hope we'll have oh. you on again sometime okay, without no any technical difficulties. Yeah, well, sorry about that. It was, it was on, I could hear you perfectly. 
I don't know what the problem was. It was probably at my end because the computers don't like me, as you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> and give my give my regards to Paula, if you will, okay. please. Okay. Okay. Thanks Talk a lot, later. Mark. You bet. Okay. Bye. You bet. That was Mark Douglas of Trading in the Zone, a disciplined trader, and it's www.markdouglas.com. And hopefully we'll have him on again, and uh, you know we'll be able to go through some of the things that he that he knows, and he is quite adept at uh, knowing the different things that happen to uh, different types of traders. Uh, in fact, he's one of my closest friends. Uh, as I mentioned, his wife married uh, my uh, Sarah and I. Uh, seven years ago, and uh, we were up there all the time visiting them and hanging out together. So what he's doing now is he's um, he takes some alone time and he goes to a hotel so that he can, you know, uh, when, he's, when he gets, his mind kicks in, he's able to, uh, you know, do a lot of writing without any, you know, problems with, uh, you know, other things that go on in life, uh, just focus on the book. So that's basically what he's doing right now. Well, we got the keys coming out here today. We're probably going to make new highs. So whether they hold up here or not, I don't, don't know. But we do have this big cycle that's either today or tomorrow or possibly Friday with the equinox coming in. It's going to be a very, very wild week uh, no matter what. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, try to have stops in there. I know they have rules now at the Merck that these stops might not work, but you've got to protect yourself, you know, somewhere. So uh, the best thing to do is to have some type of, uh, you know, stop protection in so that you're able to, you know, keep from, you know, damaging yourself. Because you will get plenty of chances to come in and, uh, you know, get these trades off, uh, you know, eventually when the market, stock market will eventually have some type of correction. Whether it's going to be in my lifetime or not, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, it will come. It's just a question of, of when. But this cycle is a big one. Uh, you know, we should have uh, at least one more high. We've made new highs in the Russell already, and uh, we'll find out if the others will, uh, you know, reciprocate, uh, you know, a little bit later in the day. But in the next two hours, we're going to see some, uh, you know, really big volatility in just about everything. But the key for me is to watch that British pound up at that 160 level. Uh, the equivalent to that in the euro is up around the 134 level. Uh, and so those are the key spots that I'm watching that uh, that should be, uh, you know, very, very important. So that's basically the my show for the day, folks. Um, I don't think you have any more questions. It's 877-927-6648. It's going to be a wild one. That's all I know. Uh, it always is on Fed Day. That's how the uh, CNBC and uh, 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 Bloomberg like it, because that gives them two days to talk about what they talked about before. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Questions are the answer. You want a better life? Ask a better question. My driving force in life is how can I become the intelligence behind financial freedom? It's why I take massive action. It's why I've invested over 10,000 hours and thousands of dollars to create the answer, the ultimate money machine. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, and on Friday, September 27th, I'll be hosting a one-day online master trader course, The Ultimate Money Machine, where I'll teach you the exact same trading strategies that I use every day when trading the markets and advising my newsletter subscribers. Learn how to precisely identify the market's next move, when to pull the trigger by letting the market commit to you before you commit to it, and how to manage your trade to maximize your results, just as we did in the month of August, when I advised my newsletter subscribers of 11 new trades, resulting in one loss and a combined profit of 129%. Our next move, it's days away. The cost of this course, $595, less than $2.50 per trading session over the next year. If you're looking for the answer, it's the ultimate money machine. All the details on the front page of TFNN.com.